Look, look, today is a, is a very special day. I, I woke up thinking, you know what? I'm going to do a salute to DJ today. So I made a couple of phone calls and I got two of the biggest DJs in the world joining us this hour. DJ Spider, what up, baby? Yo, what's happening? So there glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Yes, i uh, got one of the biggest podcasts on the planet right now. We'll talk about that in just a few. And uh, you know him from Club Quarantine. Uh, you know him from, uh, I don't know, maybe you saw him on Soul of a Nation. Maybe you saw him on uh, the latest Ford commercial, jumping out the truck and DJing for the world. He is by far one of the top uh, just DJs that comes out of your mouth when you think, hey, who's my favorite DJ right now? I'm talking about D-Nice. He's with us today as well. Oh, right, come on, man. What? How much do I owe you for that intro? I, I, I need that. <laughs> You know, it's a salute to DJs, and uh, we just wanted to show some love back to the people that have kept um, the world going for the past year as this month, March, marking pretty much the f a full year since certain cities uh, across the world have been on lockdown. And gentlemen, both of you doing what you do have kept this country and this world moving. And just thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me. And I get to hang out with my buddy Spider, man. So this has been dope, man. Yo, it's an honor, man. I'm so <laughs> glad to catch up with you on here. And uh, yeah, and salute to all the DJs out there doing it. I mean, it's been it's been millions of DJs out there just, you know, all killing it. So salute to everybody. Uh, D-Nice, when, you, when you're getting dressed and you're going on Instagram Live or whatever you're doing, do you pick the hat first and you match uh, your outfit according to the hats? Or do, because I saw one stream, you, uh, you had them all laid out. Or do, or do you pick your clothes first and then you pick the hat? What, what happens here? Yo, that's actually funny. There is a, yeah, I usually pick the hat first. I usually get inspired by the hat. You know, wow. like, see, I got, I got the big brim yeah. on right now. Yeah. You know, big brim. Uh, you know, I usually start with the hat. Yeah, you wearing shoes today? You kicking it in socks? What are we doing? Nah, um, I'm kicking it in some um, some slippers right now, man. Yeah. Th does the <laughs> slipper always coordinate with the hat? The or slipper the definitely coordinates with the hat. For sure, for sure. <laughs> I'm at, you know, I'm DJing from home. It's a work from home day, like every day has been for the last year. So you know, no shoes in the house, only slippers. I've been doing this podcast for like a uh, year through the quarantine through for Beat Source, and it's been so amazing to kind of connect the community of DJs and be able to hear their voices and see what they're going through and what they're feeling and, and sort of support each other. Like seeing that how much the DJ community has come together to support each other during this time has also been inspirational. And you're really like at the pinnacle of that. And I think that people are just so inspired by you, whether they're, they've been DJing for 30, 40 years, or they just started, you know, and even like my son, you know, he's coming in, he's like, Oh, you watching D Nice Dad? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I got him on. You know, <laughs> we'd have you on in the summer. We'd be in the pool and just have you coming through the Bluetooth. And like, you know, you became a household name for all the right reasons. And it was so authentic too. You know what I mean? You're really yourself. You're really playing music that means something to you and that's soulful and that that speaks to your soul and that is just genuine and authentic. And I think that's what shines through as well. Here's the thing, when, when DJs, we all get together and we just yeah. start talking about music, we start vibing and, and, and how each other has kind of influenced uh, any type of capacity of what we do. It's just always cool to hear the stories because then you talk about uh, the playlist that you've helped curate for the past year, D-Nice. And, and now those playlists are actually helping curate other people's playlist and sure. it's 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 because of what you helped build with uh club quarantine it is that is a great feeling too though to be honest with you because it was what happened the story of it with me i mean spider you know man you've been in there almost from the first day you know i think you were yeah. in there on the first day we were just I sharing was. stories you know like sharing the stories behind certain songs and people were were just into the stories i was reading the comments i wasn't even djing yeah i, was, I would play songs from my computer like this with my phone next to it play part of the song, I didn't want to be flagged. And um, people just kept coming back. And I was like, damn, the first day that I did it, which is the, the, the most important day was the first day that I did it, man. Like, as a DJ, I was sad, bro. Like, I was literally in tears. I'm yeah. not lying to you, keep it 100%. I woke up that morning, I could not stop crying because I knew that this thing wasn't going to be over. I also knew that as a 50 or soon to be 50 year old at the time I'm 50 now, but as a soon to be 50 year old, you know, you can't afford to just take a year off. You know what I mean? You take a year off 
then new people come in then you're no longer that person that was you know somewhat in demand you know i was in demand doing the private joints but it's like yo now they got new people coming in that'll do it we'll do it for less money like now no one works so like people are willing yep. to take way less money now just to be able to do these things so a lot of my frustration was was that it was the fact that the taxes were due you know what I'm saying like <laughs> yes I, I know pay all my taxes but then I was like wait this is gonna go on for a long time I need to hold on to my money I'll take the penalties I was just like it was like all of these things that I was thinking about as an artist all of my investments were tanking you know I invested in a water filtration system that was super dope put all this money in there and like yo it it was winning the awards at at um at C, uh, CES and then we were hit with the pandemic and ah. everything started tanking the pharmaceutical stuff I invest, everything was just tanking then I started getting the calls from like the clients um we're canceling this gig so we're gonna need that refund that deposit back in that deposit and all the way to Essence Festival this deposit I was uh I was going crazy man and in one like the tears were flowing because I felt like yo what am I gonna do like I got kids, you know what I'm saying? I take care of my mom, my kid is in college, my my youngest is in private school, you know, like what am I gonna do? And yo, there was this calm feeling that came over me that was like, yo, just be still. Like, yo, it was, I mean, it was if I I, I can't even make this up, bro. It was like, just be still. I was I was in tears. I looked on my walls, I didn't have any art on the walls, I didn't have a plant because we travel so much, I never made home home. And I didn't have any family in LA. So when I was quarantined, I was by myself, bro. And that was the loneliest feeling that I'd ever felt in my life. Knowing that we give ourselves as DJs and as talent to the world. And then when the world stopped, yo, you look back, you, you, you know, like home wasn't home. I was so used to being in a hotel room. So part of the frustration was that as well. But when I had this feeling of just being calm, that's why I had a t-shirt on. I had on my t-shirt from just getting out of bed. I went and put my hat on and I went into the kitchen and I sat at the counter and I opened my laptop up and I started playing songs that just made me happy into my phone. That is literally how it started, bro. Like, so it wasn't from a place of like, yo, I'm going to DJ. Right. Like, no, it was from a place of me trying to find a little bit of peace and me just wanting to play music. Days after that, it turned into like, oh, wow, like this is something cool. Like, wow, like, yeah, it actually feels good. It feels like a club. And that's when I just started like really taking it seriously and, and, and guarding it. You know, I didn't, I never let sponsors get involved. You know, like that was early on. Now I'll do a, a corporate events. Obviously they want to, they want the audience and do a little takeover. Yeah. But in the beginning, man, I wouldn't take a dime, bro. Like I took no money for over a month. I turned everything down. And I'm talking that day after like, that big weekend I had where I had 165,000 in there on Sunday, Monday, yo, every, every spirits company, yo, I got a half a million for you here, water company, you know, beverage company, yo, you can be the face of this, of this water, but yo, I took, all I asked was that people just give me 30 days to do this for the love. Yeah. I was like, we're not going anywhere. Let this be for the people. And then after that, Yo, we could do our deals, but for now, because I kept seeing what fans were saying, like fans were really sad, you know, and they were like, man, this thing blew up for him. Like now he's no longer going to do this for us anymore. Like he, he's just going to take the money and run. And I kept reading that. And I was like, I don't want to be that. I want to be someone that really represents for the people and to give people a little bit of hope and to inspire DJs to play more than what we were almost forced to play in the club. Mm. You know, like we were kind of forced to play. No, I love EDM. I love trap music, but I want to play it my way. I don't want to play a whole night of it. I don't want to play a whole night of r and I just want to play music, you know, like I just want to play what feels good in my set, you know, and then walk into like these clubs and you see a sign on the wall that says, yo, no reggae here. Or you see, keep it light on the hip hop. Or, you know, not, this was the one club and it happened to be my own club where I could play whatever I wanted. And it was the one thing that kind of resonated with the world, man. And it's, it's, that shit's beautiful, man. Yeah, you, you, you know, one meme that kind of sticks out is the one that's always like, no requests with the DJ. I don't even know what DJ, I don't know who that is, but he's always pushing like somebody's head out oh, the yes, window. Yes, yes, yes. Like, like no request. 
and then to where <laughs> Club Quarantine and, and, and other streams that had started to develop and, and just pop off, whether it was on Instagram Live, whether it was on Twitch or any other platform, to where now it kind of was. And my philosophy has always been about playing songs that make me happy, playing songs that make people happy. Because at the end of the day, a lot of people, see, to me, the average DJ is not playing uh, Vegas clubs with 5,000, 3,000, 10,000 people festivals or whatever it may be. Some of these people, they work all week. And then when it comes time to go out on a Friday or Saturday night, they just want to hear their favorite songs. They want to hear something nostalgic that's going to bring them back to a time where they don't have to think about the stress throughout the week. Sure. And so with Club Quarantine and, and, and all these streams, I think it really did open up for people to get that nostalgic feeling back to, to, to be able to kind of request to their favorite DJ without having to go to the club so they can hear these songs again. And I think you did a phenomenal job of really connecting with the people and bringing that back to everyone again. I appreciate that, bro. Like that was important to me. Like I, I felt like you, you know, I had all of these and, and like on any given day, I can sign on right now, man. And like, you know, by the time my set ends, it'll say, oh, it's 110,000 people in there, you know, because people I'll stay on for three or four hours playing and then people are in and out, like having a good time, maybe taking a little break. Some people are in there from start to finish. Some people are going like, oh, I'm just want to go spend 20 minutes with D nice and hear some music, then get back to my day because obviously the world kind of opened up. People are doing other things, but like, where else can you go and you'll still have like 120 something thousand people that just listen to you, you know, like it's right. just insane. And, and their draws. Think yeah, about it. Like that. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to get dressed. Yeah, exactly. You don't even have to get dressed, man. <laughs> you know, like uh, I, I'll DJ here like New Year's Eve. I had like a tux on. But I was I was in my socks. You know, like the top like, up. He was a tux from the top <laughs> up, man. <laughs> I was in my socks. I was like, yo, I'm good, man. Like I'm just stay like I and that's that's actually what's funny about this world, man. I, I feel like we've opened up new ways to not just monetize, but like new ways to find like a, a, a true audience for, for ourselves right. with these streams, you know, like now, man, the offers that I get now are like Vegas numbers and, and the world hasn't even opened up and the offers, when the offers come, I, I, I my mind is just completely blown. That something that I was doing for fun to just keep people distracted turned into where I'm finally as an open format DJ looked at and revered in the same light as an EDM DJ, you know, and that that's rare in our industry. You know what I mean? Like it's super rare. And that's why it was important for me to take this opportunity to start putting music out. Yes. Like it was important, you know, as an, as an open format DJ and not just a hip hop DJ, because I don't, I, I'm, I'm like at this point um, around eight or nine songs deep. I don't have one rap song on this project yet. Not right. to say that I won't. I am going to definitely have a rap song or two on there. But are, like, are, are, are you are you oh, back behind the mic? Besides, like, because I know with the new single, no yeah, plans for love. I'm not rapping, man. You you you're not doing anything on oh, this project. No, not at all. I have not written a rap in like 25 years. The the reason I bring it up is because with the uh, and by the way, salute, congratulations on the deal with uh, Ford. I, I saw oh, the yeah, commercial. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And, and so I was like, okay. For them to bring this record back, does this mean that we're going to see something on his new project where he is reintroducing himself? Because I almost feel we could be in a position to where we've been DJing for a minute, right? And people that study hip hop, they would know from BDP all the way to now about your career. But then I'm thinking there's a group of people like Spider was talking about earlier where, you know, and other DJs, their kids, like they, they knew Dr. Dre from headphones. They didn't know NWA Dre. They didn't know the chronic Dre. And so I'm thinking how many people only know D nice from club quarantine and don't know D nice 20, 30 years ago. Yo, it's like, it, not, forget about club quarantine. I remember, remember Heineken had this tour called Heineken red star. Yeah, I remember. I so, yeah. yeah, so they had the Red Star tour. They had a lot of R&B artists, and they I, they booked me as one of the DJs. When they went through um, the company to book me, now I had known this woman that, from the company. I did so many events with them. She called me and she said, "Yo, Heineken keeps calling about the rapper D Nice. We keep telling them I only know the DJ D Nice, <laughs> and, and this was way pre-quarantine. This had nothing to do. Wow, this was literally like." 
I my last record, when you really think about it, came out 30 years ago. Crazy. This is this is the 30th anniversary of my second album. Man. That's like a lifetime. You know what I mean? Like there are people that I DJ for that have no idea that I was ever a rapper. They don't even know I was a rapper. They think that Call Me The Nice is a new song from the commercial. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and that's it's- why I'm bringing it up, man. That's exactly why I'm bringing <laughs> it up. Because I was thinking, are we going to see something new again on the project? And he's kind of throwing this out. Let's license it out and, and, and let's get something new out there in that, in that form. I mean, it could be fun to do like an intro with me rapping on it. Yeah. You know, just for fun, you know, like just do like a rap intro. But like for the most part, nah, man, I, I want it. I was trying to create an album that would be um, um, a more R&B version of what Calvin and, and more R&B version than what like, you know, cause like Black Coffee is is more soulful house. I wanted that R&B kind of like R&B slash pop version of it. Not too poppy, but just R&B fun records. And, um, and, and, and coming from, and to be honest with you, coming from a black DJ, cause we don't really see that too much, man. You know, like, we don't see, we see black artists performing on everyone else's song, but we don't really see the black DJ doing it. Yeah, you got flex, but that's not the same type of album. You know, like I want more, my following is more mainstream at this point, you know, so I want something that truly reflects who I am and the people that listen and also reflects the music that I've been playing in this virtual club. And the music that I play, I play everything from Sweetie to, to you know, I mean, shit, the other night I was playing Sammy Davis Jr. for once in my life in the middle of my set, and it just felt good. And DJ Clark can't hit me on the side like, yo, I need this because it was just a different version of it. And like, I have fun when I can play like that, where we can just mix everything. And, and same way with you guys. I know that's the way you DJ. Anyway, that's the way you listen to records. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And you really pulled it off. Like, the I've only heard the first single, but... It's exactly like you said, you captured all of those unique things about yourself and about what you've been doing the past year and you put it into the music. And yeah, there's people like Calvin Harris that have gone from the EDM and done those funky kind of records and had a Travis Scott and Sia on there. But yours um, just captured something different. You know, it's it's not like anything else I've ever heard. And it really it does shine a light on the open format DJ in a way that no one has before, because yes, there's DJ Khaled and DJ, you know, people that do things, but they've got their own thing or sometimes open format DJs can try to go into what's popular now. But I think you tapped into the authentic thing that you brought in the past year and just put it into the music. And it sounds dope. Sounds natural. That's the, yeah. that, that, it just yeah. sounds, it sounds nice. Totally. You know what I'm saying? It sounds exactly where it needs to be. And, and, and you chose Hitco uh, as, as, you know, the, the, the vehicle, the vein to put it out, uh, yeah. teaming up with Neo. I mean, how was this? Had you guys like, hey, we got to do something. And eventually this was the perfect time to actually get it done. It's funny how the Neo thing worked out, man. Like I used to ask a lot of artists in the past, like yeah, if they were considered doing a song with me. And, you know, nine, if I asked 10 of them, nine of them definitely said, you know, no, you know, one of them being a big superstar, he actually patted me on the back was like, yo, why don't you, why don't you put a record out first and then come back to me? Let's see how that does and come back to me. And I was like, <laughs> damn, you, people will be surprised by how, if you just, you could say, Hey, I would consider it how you can like build someone's confidence by just saying, I would consider it. It's not saying yes or no. It's just all about the wording. Neo, on the other hand, this was like nine years ago. Neo was like, oh yeah, no, that's dope. Cause I was DJing, doing events for him. He was like, oh, that's dope. Yeah, now when you get the idea, let me know. Like that's how it was with Neo, but I've done events with Neo, you know, his foundation events. I've done album release parties for him. Um, and you know, when uh, when Ellie Reed and Jaha, like they both called me one day on a FaceTime and LA was like, yo, I'm sitting here thinking, why aren't we doing an album with you? And I was like, bro, I've been trying to get this album done for years, man. But like, no one, no one thought that I could have one, the ability to pull other artists to want to do the song with me. And also like, I'll be honest with you, the, the amount of attention that I got this year or within this last fiscal year has been different. My events have been private events. This thing has been global. So like, yeah, like now people see the value in it. So. I don't knock anyone for not doing a song in the past. I just like the fact that this first record 
is with the one person that agreed to do a song with me. And it was because L.A. Reid called him. You know, when we heard the original track and then we kind of flipped it a bit. When we heard the original track, um, L.A. called called um, Neo and was just like, yo, I think you should consider doing this D-Nice record. And he was like, yo, of course, send it over. Sent it to him. And then he did it in 30 minutes. Did it in 30 minutes and then sent it back. Literally, that's how that record... You know what I'm saying? Like came about and then, you know, we got on the phone. Of course I thanked him and, you know, talked to his management team. Everyone's excited. They're like, yo, we need to tour together. Like, I'm like, I'm like, yo, whatever happens when the world opens up, of course I would be honored to tour with Neo, you know, like to have my set and do my thing. Um, and, uh, you know, we got this record and it truly does feel like, that's why I didn't yell club quarantine. I just shortened it to CQ because CQ. I know eventually no one wants to be affiliated with like that word when we're all out of this. So I'm just trying to, I love the idea of virtual club quarantine because of what it represented at the time. But now that the world has opened up or starting to open up, I want people to just have the essence of what it was that made it feel special. So every record that we've been doing, whether I did it with a younger artist, because I did mix it the same way that I listen to music. I got younger artists on this joint, younger artists with hit records. Mike. Out. Oh, I'm leaving that out right now. Oh, okay, okay, I thought it was gonna be the alley oop. I thought we were gonna. <laughs> Yo, it's actually. I'm really, I'm really excited, man. I'm really excited, you know. And and, I mean, I even got one of the artists from Versus. The no, as a matter of fact, no, I got two of the artists from Versus like on my project. I'm gonna leave that out too, but I'm just gonna put that out there right now. Like, if, if we guess, can you say yes or no? I'm not saying yes or no. Ah. <laughs> but the records really feel like. They feel good. They don't feel like I'm trying to make an old record. Mm. It feels like we're making a record that's full of love and fun. And even, even if it has like a more hip hop kind of beat, it's still like the chords are fun. Like everything about it just feels fun, man. And like literally, I'm not making this up. While I'm sitting here talking to you guys, like just before I jumped on, you know, I got a message like, hey, yo, Shaggy has a song. Shaggy has a song for you. And like, I'm just tripping right now. Cause I'm like, yo, are you kidding me? Like, I love Shaggy. And the fact that he knows that I'm working on this project is so dope that Shaggy sent over a song for me to listen to. I, I have like, to ask this D-Nice, I have to ask, just because, and I don't mean to cut you off, but since this is globalization. Yes. And so your music, your, your just platform, being able to just touch the world on such a global audience and have that effect and Pitbull, another just personality yes. artist that is just reaching people at doing things with NASCAR to, I mean, you name it, what, what he's involved with just reaching more and more people across the globe. Will there be, or has there been any talk of a potential involvement with Pitbull in this project in some way? You know, what's so crazy is I have, I have Armando's number. I'm actually going to send him a text and ask him if he would be involved because Pitt is one of those dudes who I patterned myself after in terms of like he started out on the hip hop, hip hop side, you know what I mean? And then took, took the brand global by just making fun records, making records that truly reflected the audience that he wanted to attract and wanted to be these friendly records. And he, but he still made fantastic records, you know, and, uh, he was also one of those guys that I didn't think would consider doing a song with me, you know, but when, uh, when I did this thing for MTV, um, it was like club quarantine on MTV. He was one of the dudes that was like, yo, I'm going to call in for you. Like, I'm going to do it. Like, so I know I'm on his radar with what I'm doing, but like, thanks for reminding me of that. Cause I am going to reach out to him and see, because it would be an honor to truly have a, a, a pit song on there, man, to have a pit bull record on my project. Oh, you, you, feel, you see what happened there? It, it, it wasn't a yes, it wasn't a no, or maybe it was, hey, we'll consider it. I like that. No, no, no. I want to yeah, say, yeah. I want it to be a yes. It's a yes on my end. Now I got to convince him. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Hey, um, uh, Spider, now, now we've had conversations and we were like, you know what? Um, one thing, and I just want to kind of backtrack because there's a lot of DJs that were asking, and, and to the point where some DJs were pretty much hating, how can D-Nice 
get all the, the licensing or how can he stream for so long while we try to do a five minute video and we get pulled down. <laughs> oh, you know man. So it, it, was it a secret? Was it uh, some other business dealings? Obviously that may have happened behind the scenes, but is, is there a message for other DJs that may want to try to get in this level or this vein if they can, what would be your advice to them? My best, my advice to any DJ is to find your lane and like, I personally, if I were a DJ trying to do more, not even just Instagram, but just social media period, kind of DJ and these virtual events, like I would go to a record company and like try to work with them and maybe, maybe do a all universal music night. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe do something like that where they can help them get those songs like, you know, whitelisted, you know, like when I started doing like things on IG, like I don't work for IG. I have no stock in Instagram or Even Facebook. You did. I don't have any of that, you know, have I met some people from there? Yeah. Do I notice that my IG plays a little bit longer? I do notice all of that. Do I say anything? No. Why am I going to, what am I going to complain? Of for? course. Like, no, it is what it is. Like, I don't ask any questions. I just play music for people. That's it. But there was a night that I went on and it was, um, it was almost a year. It was in honor of Prince. And I know Prince's family probably, um, because it was, they were all involved in it and they probably said, Hey, he has the rights to play whatever, you know, like, because it was a straight Prince tribute for, for them, you know, and like, you know, you just never, you never know. Like, I don't know why my thing goes longer. I just know, like, if you, I started doing this in the beginning for a specific reason. And that reason was to help people. And whether these platforms got behind me to amplify that, that's on them. That's not really on me. That's not me asking them, hey, I wish every DJ can play because it's, I mean, the audience is amazing and it has proven to increase sales for artists. I mean, versus, versus alone increases like catalogs, you know, like, so we know that we have the ability to do so. So yes, I do wish, but there's probably just so much red tape and I don't know anything about, like, it's not my world, not my business. I am truly just DJing and I do get flagged. But I also play my songs a certain way. Not about speeding it up. I echo stuff out. I'm always talking. I'm fading out. Like I'm always, I'm always trying to. Because there was one time where I just couldn't even. Yo, every time I played a song, I was, I was like, and then I just started trying different things. And like, yeah, you got to try it, man. You no, know? I, I ain't mad at that. Yeah. Um, I, I have, I have two more things, and one of them I was, um, I've been watching Soul of a Nation, and I saw you on the uh, last episode. This oh yeah. Week where they featured you and you mentioned um, helping people. And that's one thing that our show is very involved with the community so much that I ran for mayor here in Phoenix, Arizona. I lost, but the point was I took a chance that other people weren't willing to do. <clears throat> what is the most important, I guess, social issue for you right now? Because I know this is no stranger to you. It's something that you've been involved with through decades. Yes. But what, issue right now that's affecting us all socially would you want to get that message out to today well as of now my it's kind of like switching for me you know to to mental wellness because i'm really concerned with how people are going to come out of this you know and if you look at me you know i've had i i you know i will i will not lie and say i haven't had a good year in terms of like career and visibility but i also struggle with like the feeling of like survivor's remorse of like, yo, well, why me, man? You know what I'm saying? Like I've been in this joint long enough. Why do I feel, why is it happening for me? You know? And uh, it's a very sad and lonely feeling at time, you know, at times, you know, where, you know, even I, I get stressed out over it, you know, and I can't imagine what it must feel like for people who can't pay their bills or, you know, they have like medical issues due to COVID. Um, you know, had to drop out of school because they can't afford it, can no longer afford it. Parents that can no longer find a babysitter. So then now they can't even go to work so they can come back and take care of, you know, be able to provide for their families. It's a lot of that that comes along with it. And it, it is why I DJ as long as I do, because I know that someone out there needs a few minutes just to get away, just to escape and to be in a virtual world where you're still buying bottles for people, but you're not really buying anything. It's just the fun of it all. And so mental wellness is something that I'm really, that's what I'm like, you know, really trying to get more involved in, but like throughout the, you know, throughout the years and, and specifically throughout last year, like I, I raised money for 
so many people, man. I mean, I raised money for political campaigns for, for Kamala Harris and Biden to, you know, I raised money for the CDC Foundation, you know, hundreds of thousands. I've raised money to help the Apollo Theater. I'm talking nearly 200,000. I raised money for cancer patients. She recently passed away, but she was like 13. You know, on my IG Live during my set, raised like 90,000 close to one. Actually, no, I take that back. By the time my set was done, raised like $110,000 for her. You know, uh, you know, I've, I've raised money for HBCUs and had other organizations, you know, social media platforms amplify the number, you know, like raising money for them. I've done virtual proms for kids on my on my IG and then on other platforms, you know, like I've been, you know, I, I really look and I'm not looking for a pat on the back or anything. I just know that I did all that I could do without driving myself insane, you know, for for the year. And it was, like I said, it was a lot to do with survivor's remorse and like not wanting to have this platform and not take advantage of it in a way that can be supportive to other people. I've raised money for DJs, you know, <clears throat> when people, when people would like find out what my cash app was, I never posted a cash app When people would literally find out, they would find out what the cash app is and send money. I would send that money to other DJs, you know, like someone couldn't pay their bills like yo here's 500 bucks or here's 1500 bucks i never talk about these things but i want to talk about it because i feel like more people should hear more people should be willing to do that for each other during this time and so when i talk about mental wellness it's like doing things that are going to help people get through this raising some money now to be able to provide online therapy for some people you know and especially people in our music community you know, when the music stopped and people could no longer work, they didn't have options. There were roadies out there that, you know, there are roadies out there that played mainstream pop events that made enough money because they were doing such massive Bieber tours and this tour and that tour that when the pandemic hit, maybe they were okay. Maybe they already owned the home, but then there were black roadies that weren't on those same massive tours that when the clapping stopped and just people of color in general, like, the clap and stopped and there were no shows, these guys couldn't pay their bills, you know? Like, so it's like, I'm just trying to always be mindful of that on how I can raise money, how I can offer my support for people. And um, and that's just always been important to me. So today's issue is definitely mental wellness, but tomorrow may be something different, you know? Tomorrow may be Breast Cancer Foundation or something like that, you know? But I just always felt like it's important to give back. Right. Be nice. D nice um, for, for the past couple of months. Well, I guess since, um, you know, quarantine hit different people, the pandemic took over our lives. I've had the chance to talk with a lot of um, just legends, legendary people such as yourself doing just great things. And uh, I've, I've been asking this same question in every conversation. Now I know you and I, we have, we have common connections. Uh, I used to be one of the uh, brand ambassadors with uh, team Hennessy. Yep, and yep. so one of the, you know, it's, it's never stop never settle and that's you embody that man and i think the people that are still being persistent and still hustling and going out and getting it especially due to the pandemic um if, to where i've said man if this didn't bring out the, the the hustler in you if you were able to get out and hustle it might not be there but at the same time it awoken a beast in certain people that brought them to different opportunities and brought them to different audiences and the question that i've been asking everyone for, for decades, you've been able to follow your passion and just keep going. But what has been your why? Like, why do you do what you do? And why do you think you are so successful? Um, I think my why, my why comes from my days as a rap artist. Um, when the record company I was signed to, Jive Records, I always felt like they didn't, they, they never really treated me the way they treated a lot of other artists, you know, like even when I signed my deal, they also had Steady B. So they signed BDP, but Karis wanted me to have a solo deal as well. They really didn't give me a huge budget as it, you know, my budget was like 25 grand when they signed like Tribe and everyone, they gave them like a quarter of a mil, but my budget was always low. Like, oh, well, we already have Steady B. We, we don't need another one. Like, and so then I, I had to prove myself. 
then even when I put out Call Me D Nice, like that record was never scheduled to be released. It only happened because I took it to a radio station and was like, hey, this is Red Alert. Can you listen to this? And he heard it and then he played it for the program director and that dude added it to like rotation from hearing it from like a demo. And so it kind of forced Jive to put records out on me. And this is no slight on Jive because I love the, the experience that I had with them as well, because I wouldn't be here without that experience. But when, after my second album, my second album did, my first album did almost like, almost a half a million copies. The second album did like just over 300,000 copies. You know, they, the music started changing and I was still, I was young and that, I was 21 years old when my second album came out, but then they considered me old school. Like, well, you're old school now because now the new wave is out. You have Biggie come, you know, Biggie and the bad boy movement and Death Row and Snoop and every, yo, and there was no room for someone that came out in the eighties. But the crazy part was I was just so young when I came out that, I mean, I'm younger than Puff, I'm younger than Jay-Z, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but I was so young when I came out that I was still considered old school. And it was just like, yo, what do you mean? Like, what do you mean I can't make records anymore? What do you mean? Like, you're not going to put a record out on me. Like, and that, that feeling was crazy. You know, like that feeling of like not having the freedom to make music because someone felt like you were old school was crazy. So when I asked the why, like, I know why it was because of that feeling that I had back then of someone counting me out and I never wanted that again. And I never wanted to give someone else the power to count me out. It was like, I'm going to do what I feel is right for me. And I went years without, I didn't have a bank account. I lost everything. I know what it's like to be an artist and have success and to lose everything to where I was back sleeping on my aunt's floor after having Call Me D Nice and after having gold records with BDP, I had to start all over again. And it took years. And I came back because I found a way in. I was just, I was always into web development, taught myself how to program. And then I started building websites. I started building websites for artists. For the photography. To say again? Photography as well. Photography. Photography happened because I was building someone's website and I didn't like their pictures. And I was like, hey, you know, I'll pad the budget. And I went and bought a camera. And then I went to school for photography on their, on their dime and started taking pictures that I used to build their website. You know what I mean? Like it's the same hip hop mentality of using whatever it is that you have to make this record. Like, I applied all of that and everything that I've done, you know? And um, so the why goes back to just not wanting to be counted out, bro. Like ever wanting to be counted. I never wanted ageism to exist in my life. Like, what do you mean I'm old school at 21? Like, how does my career, how, does, how, why would my, why should my career be over at 21, you know? And like, yeah, man. And, um, and also another part of the why is years later, a gentleman who managed 50 Cent and Mariah, his name was Chris Lighty. Being, uh, you know, I, I was still trying to make rap records and Chris Lighty challenged me. He said, yo, bro, you're more than just a rapper. Like maybe no one wants to hear that from you right now, but there's so much creativity in you. Maybe you should actually explore the creativity. And it wasn't words that I wanted to hear at the time. It was like, what do you mean? Like I'm a rapper, that's what I want to do. I want to make music. But he forced, my, he forced me to, to actually recognize all of the talents and not just one thing. Maybe people won't, won't accept me right now for this one thing because being away in hip hop for, you know, at that time, it was probably like seven years since my last project. Um, it wasn't proven that you can go away and come back. You know, it was like out of sight, out of mind in hip hop, you know, like there was no proven, it was still kind of in its infancy. Um, so it forced me to just be creative in other ways, man, like to learn how to program and to take photography seriously. And then I fell in love with DJing and that's been it, man. So yeah, it goes back to those con those conversations, Jive counting me out and then Chris Lighty challenging me. All right, uh, Dean Ice, I, I don't know if you're gonna give us the uh, the release date because I know you were kind of quiet about who's gonna be on, on the new album, the new project here. By the way, what's the full name? We know the single, No Plans For Love, but uh, the, the whole project is called it's called, the whole project is called High Vibrations. That's what I'm trying to bring musically, just good vibes. Um, and uh, we have uh, we have it coming out at the end of, of uh, June. So yeah. And no, I'm not telling you who's on it, man. I, I need you to be surprised. <laughs> I need you to be like, yo, how did he pull that off? Right. That's what I need. 
when you <laughs> I respect it, man. I respect it. Uh, any last minute words? I mean, again, we're this whole show uh, today has been about saluting the DJs. Anything that you would like to say? Yeah, I would personally. I would like to say um, thank you to all DJs for for keeping these positive vibes going all over the world, man. Like I tell people all the time, man. Music when when the world stopped, the music kept playing. And, and music saved lives, man. So I know that what we all did collectively really kept the world uplifted, man. So salute to all of the DJs, young and old. You know, it doesn't matter, man. Salute to the DJs that kept the world going. There you go. Hey, Spider, thank you so much for joining us today as well. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the, the podcast information, what you got for him? Oh, yeah. Just check out the 20 podcast. We're doing a weekly show uh, in, in conjunction with BeatSource.com and uh, highlighting DJs, producers, music industry professionals, and just trying to build this community and keep, keep everyone connected uh, during this time.